Hello everyone, my name is Lucian and I'm going to talk about uh, wave equations and plane wave solutions. First of all, what is a wave? A wave is a spatial disturbance that propagates with a certain velocity. This that I have drawn here is called a plane wave, which is a wave that propagates in only one direction. The equation that that states the equation that describes this behavior is called wave equation, and it's this one. This equation says that a certain disturbance, disturbance in the space that propagates over time with a certain velocity v. Well, and what about electromagnetic waves? They are our main ob object of study here. And we can use Maxwell's equations to derive the, the, the wave equation for the electromagnetic waves. Well, we're going to start considering a simple media, which means that we have no charge density and no current density. We're going to start by writing Maxwell's equation. The curl of E equals to minus the time derivative of the electric of, ma of the magnetic field sorry we can write this part of the equation as this mu r mu naught times the time derivative of h our next step is taking the curl of both sides of the equation which will give us this the curl of the curl of E equals to minus mu r mu naught the time derivative of the curl of H. We can write this side of the of the equation as this the gradient of the divergence of d minus the Laplacian of e which and this part of the equation we can remember that another Maxwell's equation which is the curl of H equals to epsilon R epsilon naught the time derivative of the electric field E times the current density j, which is zero. We can write this over here. Uh, we're going to square this is going to be a second order derivative and this part of the expression here we can recall another of Maxwell's equations that says that the divergence 
of D equals to the charge density. In our case, the charge density is zero, so this part of the expression is zero. Our next step, we are going to have this. The Laplacian of E equals to, we can consider this remembering that the refractive index is the square root of mu r times epsilon r. So we can say that these terms will become n squared, which is the refractive index of the medium, um, times mu naught, epsilon naught, times the second second order derivative time derivative. Uh, this we can remember as well is equals to the this the inverse of the square speed of light which is based from this expression here so our final equation right now is this one n square over c square times the second order time derivative of e. Uh, this, using the same process, we can find the equivalent equation for the magnetic field, which is this one. Oh, sorry. So we have both equations for electric and magnetic field. But what we have here it is not a plane wave. So we can remember that a plane as I said before, a plane wave is a wave that propagates in only one direction. So let's consider the z direction only. So this will simplify our equations since we have just on one direction this term of both expressions is going to be simplified as this the second order derivative of the electric field E space derivative is equals to n square over c square the second second order derivative of e and the time and the same for the magnetic field we have the second order derivative of the magnetic field h the second order uh, space derivative is equals to n square over c square the second order derivative of the magnetic field in the time now here we have our plane wave equations for the electric and electric and magnetic field We can simplify both equations by using complex notation. Uh, mm, we're gonna let the el complex electric field equals to 
the amplitude here times e to the i k z minus omega t and the same thing for the magnetic field k z minus omega t uh, we know that the propagates in the same direction and one has an applying both of these equations in this Maxwell equation gives us this minus k e not y equals to omega mu not mu r age not x in the x direction and k e not x equals to omega mu not mu r h not y in the y direction from these equations we can get the that h is equals to k over omega mu naught mu r the propagation direction z cross product with the electric complex electric field E naught uh, this we can say that it, uh, it is the 1 over velocity of any propagating wave so we have this equation right here uh, and using an electromagnetic wave we have that is C and the refractive index which changes the speed of the, of the light inside certain medium we have this equals to n c mu naught mu r z cross product e so we have that the our electromagnetic waves the the electric field and magnetic field components are transverse and that the amplitude of h can be defined by the amplitude of the e also, going back to our previous equations, E to so the I KZ minus omega T and age of Z and T complex equals to age not e to the i k z minus omega t we can simplify this part this amplitude here and we can also transform this complex exponential exponentials into a cosine 
so we can simplify these equations into this finally using a real notation cosine kz minus omega t and the magnetic field is going to be this e to the i n naught n r cosine of kz minus omega t which this comes from the this relationship here using Maxwell's equations and also they are transverse so transverse so we have a generic a generic vector here we're gonna have this generic vector here Z. so here we have the real field solutions for the electromagnetic waves they are both plane waves and we can see that they are transverse and that the amplitude of the magnetic field depends on the electric field which can be uh, drawn as this we have we have the x axis here the z axis here and the y axis here. Uh, saying that the electric field propagates in the x direction propagates in the z direction and its amplitude is on the x direction we're gonna have the magnetic field behaving like this the electric field and the magnetic field transverse to the electric field Well, this is it. Thank you very much for watching.